Okay, so in a pub quiz the other day, there was a question. What is the national animal of Scotland? And for some reason, I said the unicorn, and I was right. But why is that the national animal of Scotland, and where did I pull that fact from? I wanted to know more. Because look at this, Scotland's Royal Arms, Lion, Scottish football team, Lion, rugby team, Thistle, Flag, St Andrew's Cross, Patron Saint, St Andrew, National Animal, no, not the Loch Ness Monster, but the Unicorn. Why this mythical creature? Well, I don't know yet, but before I look into this anymore, let's go over what we do know about unicorns from a historical perspective, not My Little Pony or anything. And I want to start here with the Hereford Mapper Mundi. Created in the 1300s, it shows the world from a very biblical perspective, with Christ at the top above all, and Jerusalem right in the middle on the wrong side of Africa. But if we move down just a bit further than the creepy upside down tree person and over a bit more, just there, that's a unicorn. And if we move over to the west of the map and south a bit, that's Hereford. And just following the river Y up there, that is Scotland. So in 1300s, we can see that there was definitely belief that unicorns existed on the same planet as Scotland, but the unicorn is nowhere near Scotland. And I guess that isn't that weird, it's not like there were lions in England. But belief in unicorns dates back long before even this. The Babylonians worshipped them, the ancient Greeks believed in their existence, and it's suspected that there's reference to them in the Old Testament. The unicorn was thought to be the strongest and most powerful of all the animals, and could only be tamed by a virgin maiden. It's often believed that a unicorn could be some confusion between a narwhal and a rhinoceros. The narwhal tusks, which are actually teeth which have gone through the head, do have this magical spiral on them which greatly resembles the horn that we associate with the mythical unicorn. And you can see some great examples of these in the Natural History Museum in London. And if we look again at the unicorn on the map, we can see that the unicorn sits just below the rhinoceros, towards the south of Africa where many rhinoceros species live today. And the unicorn isn't the only strange creature that the Englishman thought existed in 14th century Africa by the way. Just look at the figures on this map. Brilliant. Throughout the Middle Ages, unicorns appear all throughout art and literature, not just in Scotland, but across much of Europe. Okay, so that's what we do know about unicorns, but how do they relate to modern day Scotland? So let's look at that coat of arms again. Either side of the shield depicting a lion, there's a unicorn, each holding up a flag representing Scotland and bound by a large golden chain. But what does this represent? Wait, hang on, that looks familiar. Two seconds. Here, on my passport, it's the same unicorn as on the Scottish coat of arms, but this time with a lion and a harp on there. And is this the image hiding in my mind that gave me the answer to that pub quiz? And why is it on my passport? as a Welshman. It turns out we need to go back even earlier than the 14th century, because this whole story begins with the Scottish King William I in the 12th century, who was known as William the Lion. It was probably William that first used the Scottish coat of arms, and it was very likely a display of strength. However, it is on the seal of his son that we see the first evidence of the lion rampant being used. I've seen some sources claim that William I was the first to use the unicorn on the Scottish royal arms but I can't find evidence to support this, at least not through any free online sources. However, some articles and the National Trust for Scotland claimed that it was in the 16th century when this style of coat of arms became truly popular, and that the unicorns made their way onto the coat of arms. But look a little bit closer at these unicorns. They have the head and body of a horse, but the feet and hind legs of a goat, a tail much like a lion's, and a beard like Will Ferrell in Zoolander? Hmm. These were the unicorns that were popularized in the 15th and 16th century, the unicorns of heraldry. And so it is likely that this is when they were first used on the royal arms, and not at the time of William the Lion. The Scots must have seen something in the unicorn, as it can still be seen around the country and National Unicorn Day is celebrated on April the 9th. In Celtic culture, they symbolised power and purity. They were strong, difficult to capture, and stood alone. It sounds very much like the Scots of the history books. Okay, so the gold-chained unicorn was used by the Scots in the 16th century, and it has remained an important part of Scottish culture to this day. So why is it on my passport as a Welshman? Well, that's actually quite easy to answer, and I'll avoid discussion of Wales until another video, because this one is about Scotland. And I'll get bitter. Following the death of Elizabeth I in 1603, famously a virgin queen with Virginia being named in her honour, no direct heir was left for the English throne. And as with a lot of British monarchy history, it's about to get very Game of Thrones. With no heir of her own, the next in line to the English throne was her cousin, James. And because European royalty almost exclusively breeded amongst themselves, he also happened to be James VI of Scotland. And so the union of the crowns took place, merging the two countries under one king, but still remaining two separate kingdoms. It would be another century before the Acts of Union would be passed, merging the two countries in law. James wanted to assert that he was indeed king over both kingdoms, and one way he did this was by changing his coat of arms in Scotland and outside of Scotland. In Scotland, this was the coat of arms he used. And without going too deep into the symbolism here, it had the unicorn on the left and the English lion on the right. 
The shield was courted to represent Scotland, England, Ireland and France, and there were also thistles on the ground and the Scottish lion stood atop the crown. Outside of Scotland this was used, representing Great Britain. The English lion now on the left, where it stood on the previous English coat of arms, and the shield courted in a slightly different way to give England more prominence. The unicorn was then placed on the right instead of the Welsh dragon, which Elizabeth had previously used since she was King of England and Wales. She was a queen. Since she was Queen of England and Wales. So that's why the unicorn is the national animal of Scotland and how it's made its way onto the passports of everyone in Britain. Let me know if you found this interesting and if I missed anything or made any errors. What's the national animal of your country and is it fear that the Welsh dragon isn't represented? Comment down below. Thanks for watching and see you again soon.